guys, my name is Martha. Thank you so much for joining me today. For this video, we will be doing the Christian tag, which is made up of 20, yes, 20 different questions. Let's get started. Okay, so the first one is, what is your testimony? Who were you before Christ and who are you now? I've shared a little bit about my testimony before. I struggle at times to feel like I have a testimony, but I think throughout all of my seasons in my life, God has really been the one that has pulled me through them because I know for a fact that I wouldn't have made it through some of them if it wasn't for God. So, yeah. Who were you before Christ? I was in my mother's womb, but just like Jeremiah 29 11 says, <laughs> he already knew me. I do want to answer this part a little bit differently just because I've always known Christ in a certain way. Without Christ, I think I would be very lost. I would be very confused. I would probably have a very low self-esteem, just to be honest. I would probably be very depressed, um, but because I do have Christ in me, I just have faith and I just have hope, and even if things aren't going the right way, I know that God has a purpose and that He has a plan. So that's the way I'm going to answer that question. What is your favorite Bible verse and why? I've shared this previously. My favorite verse is definitely Jeremiah 29, 11. I feel like it's a promise and I feel like it's what kind of anchors me whenever I feel lost or confused. I go to that verse and I'm like, yes, yes, God, yes. I believe it and I declare it and yeah. What denomination are you and what are your beliefs on denomination in the church? Okay, got it. My denomination is Evangelical Christian and basically with that is we just believe what the Bible says. That's pretty much, I feel like, what Evangelical means to me at least. If you're not in the right denomination, then you don't really get to know God to the fullest. And I say that because a lot of different denominations believe different things. To each their own, I guess, but I feel like sometimes you could be missing out from what God has for you because you're trying to fit this denomination and their rules and what they think is right. So, what is your favorite Christian song or hymn? Uh, I have too many. I can't answer that question. So, what kind of church do I attend and what are the beliefs of my church? Um, my parents are pastors of Fresh Fire Church here in Florida. Basically, like I said, we're evangelical Christians. We are also kind of Pentecostal, not to like full extreme, but somewhere in between. We believe in like the Holy Spirit, the movement of the Holy Spirit, that He can heal you, that He can manifest Himself on you. Um, not in a scary like way, but in a good way. <laughs> Our church is really focused on restoring families, making sure that you have a healthy family that's Christ-centered. And we also give you the tools and the support that you need to kind of get your ministry off the floor. So that's mainly what we focus on, personal ministries and families. What is your favorite Christian book besides the Bible? I don't have it right now because I let a friend borrow it, but it's called Crazy Love by Francis Chan. When I read that book, it was like, poof. Mind blown, this is everything, this is yes, yes. It's really good. If you haven't read it, it's an easy read and it's going to really transform your life, so check it out. Have you been baptized? When and how? And what was your personal experience? Okay, so yes, I was baptized when I was... I was between 13 and 15. And basically I got baptized because I was just really ready. It was really a catalyst in my relationship with God. Um, look at me using big words. <laughs> when and how? I did it at the beach. My dad baptized me with another brother from the church. You just do the dip and yeah. You just do the dip. What is your favorite book in the Bible and verse in that book? My favorite book is Matthew. I don't have a favorite verse in that book. I guess I should, right? Since it's my favorite book. But I don't. That's just my favorite book. Um, what is my favorite thing about my church? If you want to do something for God, if you want to serve, if you want to start a ministry, it's very simple. You know, we don't make it complicated. So I think that's what I like the most. Okay, what do you feel is the biggest struggle in the church today? I can make a let's talk video about this and talk about it for days. I could narrow it down to relevance where people don't think that the church is relevant in today's times. We don't need the church. We don't need someone to tell us how to live our lives. We don't need to go and worship a God. So I think one of the problems is the church staying alive 
in today's culture. And in part, I feel like it's our generation's responsibility. In part, I feel like the church has really been lacking. And in part, I feel like we haven't been able to make a true and genuine connection with our culture because we're trying to mimic what the world is doing. We're trying to make church cool. We're trying to make it into something it's not. It's not, it wasn't intended for that. And I feel like that's why we've been declining in all, you know, the whole global church. I feel like we've just been taking attack after attack after attack after attack because we don't believe what today's culture believes in, like same-sex marriage or abortions or whatever. Because we're not aligned with this culture's beliefs, um, we're out of date, you know? So I feel like that's our biggest challenge and the church really needs to come alive and that has to do a lot with uniting together, forgetting about denominations, forgetting about all of that, and really going back to the roots of the New Testament church and figuring out what we need to fix and how we can bring salvation again to humanity. How do you openly share your faith? Um, okay, <laughs> one, through here on YouTube, obviously. My channel is all about a Christian lifestyle. I don't have a problem sharing my faith. Um, another way, definitely evangelizing, talking to other people about my faith. What is a Bible verse that gives you the most hope? Um, <laughs> I feel like I just answered this one. It was a Jeremiah 29, 11. That one just gives me the most hope, you know? What is a belief of yours that usually most of those in the Christian church disagree with? Oh, God. Oh, God. Whew. Pressure. Pressure. First of all, I don't want this to be, like, a huge big deal because it's really not, like, what to wear to church. I feel like it's a topic that it's so sensitive. No one really likes talking about it, but at the same time, you'll find out. <laughs> you'll know. Um, so for Hispanic churches, it's really common to dress business casual to business professional. What we're seeing more and more, especially in like American churches, is that it's very, very casual. Like red jeans, boots, a tank top on the altar. No comment. Me, no comment. I'm not going to say anything about it. But in like the Hispanic Christian culture, that's like a no no. If I went on stage with ripped jeans, a tank top, and like flip flops, no. <laughs> dead no. However, for me, I feel like, listen, it's not really about what you're wearing. Should you be dressed a little bit more appropriately, um, presentable? I think if you're going to the altar, you should be giving your best. That includes like your offering, that includes your appearance, that includes everything. Appearance isn't number one, of course. Like I said, this isn't a big deal to me, but it is something that... Eh. So now this is my viewpoint. Jeans and a nice shirt is good, you know? Like, that's fine. So what I'm saying is I think we need to be more open, but not to the extreme where we're wearing tank tops and jeans. I I hope that makes sense because I feel like it's not making sense. Have you read the full Bible? If so, how long did it take you? This is kind of embarrassing a little bit. No, I have not read the full entire Bible in like one sitting. I've read all of the New Testament. I'm slowly trying to read through the Old Testament. So no, I have not read all of the Bible. If you have, kudos to you. Congrats. The camera just died and it might die again really soon. So I'm going to finish up really quickly. Do you use a devotional? If so, what kind? How do you make sure you keep in track in God's word. This is my devotional I started this year. How do I keep up? I take it day by day. If I want to read a chapter, I'll read a chapter. If I only want to read a verse, I read a verse. If I want to read a whole book, I read a whole book. How do you view politics in your religion? Basic. If your political party doesn't align with your values, what are you doing? That's all I'm going to say about it. If you could meet Jesus right now, what would be your first action? Action and first question, how do you view heaven? <gasps> Jesus. That would be my first action. My first question would be like, since I'm seeing him, that means that I'm dead. How did I die? What happened to me, Jesus? I don't know. I would be like, 
blown away completely. How do I view heaven? Misterio. Es un misterio. It's a mystery to me. Heaven is just heaven. I can't describe it better than the Bible. If you want to know, read the Bible. What is the silliest prayer you have prayed and oddest place you have prayed? Okay, this is TMI. If you don't want to hear this, skip a little bit because, yeah. Oddest prayer when I have cramps on my period, on my dot, yeah. So, weirdest place you can imagine. Not too much. We're not going to stay there too long because nobody wants to know. How do you bring prayer into your daily life? What are your views on healings and praying in tongues? Praying in tongues, yes, I can pray in tongues. Healings, yes, God can heal. Prayer, keep it simple, keep it genuine, keep it from your heart. Just having a simple conversation with him. Are you ready if Jesus were to come tomorrow? Yes, I feel like I'm right with him. I feel like I've obeyed him as much as I could have and could be ready. I don't know. So that was all of it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to like it. And if you have not yet subscribed, make sure to do so down below. I'll see you guys again really soon. Bye! You just do what I do. Now you can just put all of your favorite Bible verses in your own personalized devotional. And of course, you can do this however you want.